what he tried one time. Um, apparently, I didn't. I had the speaker not working, and it decided it wasn't going to let me record. So, uh, like, all right, it says it's going, but anyway, this is Friday, uh, the Friday before Father's Day. I want to wish all the fathers out there that might be listening a uh, happy Father's Day. I uh, pray that you would uh, have a good weekend and enjoy uh, your day. Um, I appreciate the fact that uh, I've got fathers that do listen and fathers that are trying to raise their children and grandchildren in the way they should. In the uh, love and admonition of the Lord. Amen. This week, we, let's get into our devotion, a word with Pastor Al. And we've talked about some words that are uh, reflective of what I've been preaching in the days of Noah. And knowing that Jesus, he, uh, and, and God for that matter, he loved us so much that he was willing to give us a way that we could be saved from the, the destruction that is coming. We saw that Noah, in the days of Noah, that he received instruction, and he took that instruction, and he used all his efforts to do what it was that God had called him to do. And he did this with expecting uh, that God would save him. And, and that was the fact, the reason why he was building the ark, to save himself and the animals that would be on the ark with him. And he did this with urgency. Uh, but all these things were being done for the simple fact is that he wanted to be saved. God wanted to save him, and he needed to do the things that he had been commanded to do in order to be saved. Um, and I believe that is the best news that we can have is that God loves us enough that he was does want us to be saved. Uh, John 3.16 tells us that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I'm sure you sat there and recited that with me as I said it, because it's probably the most quoted verse in the Bible. And it shows this very truth that we have to be saved. Jesus came to this earth as a man to seek and to save that which was lost. And God sent him that he would be the Lamb of God, a propitiation that would make us into a right relationship, reconciling us back to the Father to have that fellowship and worship that God had intended at creation. But I want you to understand, just as, you know, we're, we're talking about the days of Noah. After Noah, uh, men started thinking they could work their way to heaven. They started building a tower, and they started trying to get to a place where that if it did flood, now all they had to do is know that God already said they would never destroy the uh, the the world with water. He, that's the reason why he has his bow in the sky, the rainbow. Um, but we can't work our way to heaven. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 tells us the truth of that. For that by grace you are saved, not of, by grace you are saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So that tells us we can't work our ways in, in, in the salvation or our way to heaven. Uh, but the Father himself, the Father in heaven, draws a person to himself. And that's what kind of love that he has. He knows the heart. He knows those people who desire uh, good. And he sees that and he understands that. In John 44, six, chapter 6, verse 44, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. You see, Jesus realized why he was here, and he knew. It wasn't a matter of realizing. He came with that purpose uh, to be that lamb, to wash our sins away, and to cleanse us. And uh, he says that if if we know that, and we, he will draw us to him, God does. Uh, it, and it, it's not that God, you know, some people say that God won't send people to hell. And I covered that yesterday, I believe it was, is that God's a just God. And uh, he will judge those that deny what Jesus did for us. Uh, but he has mercy on us. And it's just like if you was walking down the street and you saw some young and uh, little boy, little girl, tattered clothes, lost, uh, dirty, crying, had no hope whatsoever. That's what it's like when God looks at us, a lost and dying uh, creation. Uh, and until we 
feel that draw. In Titus 3, 5, it says he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing and regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. It is so awesome that God sees us in our undone condition and that we, he knows our heart and he knows the desires of our heart. And the first thing that we should desire is to know our creator. Uh, Jesus said this in John 3, verse 3. Uh, Jesus said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You see, this washing of regeneration that we talked about in Titus 3, 5, we have to be washed, not only to wash our sins away, but it is to renew, regenerate the Holy Spirit. That is being born again. That's what saved, being saved is all about. Yes, we're saved from hell, but we're saved from our own destruction, from the bondages of sin. And I think, I'm thankful that God's willing to wash us to regenerate us, to give us his spirit in us uh, that we can love and have a relationship with our Father. But we've got to do something, and that's relinquish control from self to Jesus. And, uh, you know, a lot of people believe that all you got to do is say, hey, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to go to heaven. But the, the, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And that is where many people who think they're saved, they're not because they've never made Jesus the Lord of their life. The verse goes on to say, and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, you know, it's one thing to say, I don't want to go to hell. And Jesus, is that the way? And they recite some prayer and they never really believe in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And why would that be so important? Well, we're dead in our sins, our trespasses and sin. Jesus said that. And that is the reason why he was willing to be nailed to a cross. He laid his life down that we might could be regenerated, to be made whole, washed up. Our sins are gone. Amen. But we are now that new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that true salvation that we have, we read in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men to which we must be saved. And that is Jesus. So we hear the name of Jesus. Do we truly understand that he is God made flesh? He became the Lamb of God, became a man, and he was nailed to a cross to wash our sins away. And that is where a lot of people get it wrong. They just, they, they want that fire insurance. Call upon Jesus with a heart that says, states that you're willing to make him Lord. Um, and, it, you know, not just the salvation from hell, as I was talking about. But how about the salvation from the ways of sin? The things in this life that draw us, we can be saved from that. We don't have to sin. We don't have to give in to temptation. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us that. He is always going to make a way of escape. And that's the salvation we have. How about uh, the salvation from the lies of Satan? We have the knowledge. We've talked about God's word. And we can have salvation if we believe that Jesus is the word. Amen. John 1, 1. And, and we understand that if we know the truth, then we don't have to listen to the lies of Satan. And then how about the sal uh, salvation from the bondage of death? So many people are afraid to die, especially that now that we have this COVID-19. And, you know, it, we, we can have salvation. I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to lay my head down at night. Uh, I'm not anxious about anything. I know that Jesus died on the cross. I've, my sins have been washed away. And I'm living a life and trying to uh, do the things he's commanded us. And I have peace that passes all understanding because I have the salvation that's based on the fact that Jesus is Lord of my life. John 16 or 14 verse 6 says that Jesus said himself, he was talking to his apostles there in the upper room. He was about to go to the cross and he told Thomas because Thomas had said, how do we get to heaven? 
He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus should be that one that you desire. And when you desire Jesus, the Father will draw you. and He will clean you up. and He will do all that he needs to do to make you his own. But there's a lot of people in this world that will tell you different. They think there's a lot of different ways to get to heaven. Not all roads lead to heaven. And Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. We recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is where we need to be is that we desire that fellowship with him. We desire and believe and want Jesus to be the Lord of our lives. Do you allow God to act through your life and draw others in, uh, to salvation? You see, if we are uh, forgiving our debtors as we forgive those who trespass against us, or, or trespasses, you know what I'm saying, uh, we have to be like Jesus, and we have to be seeking and saving that which was lost that we might draw them to the Father. See, if you never tell anybody about Jesus, they don't ever, and they don't ever get to hear that, that. That's on us. So we need to be busy about what it is that God has placed before us to do His will in our life. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Uh, Galatians 2, 20. Acts 16, verses 30 through 33 says this. Then He brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Who was this? Yeah, it was the, uh, the, the jailer, the Philipp, Philippian jailer. And Paul and Silas had been locked up, and they saw the power of God, not because they had had their backs laid open, not because they were in stocks, not because they were in the innermost part of that, that uh, prison, but because the power of, because of their drawing him by singing songs and hymns, and preaching the love of God through Jesus Christ. The jails, the cells were burst open, nobody left, and he was about to kill himself. And they said, don't harm yourself. We're all here. And that's when he says, what must I do to be saved? And, he, and Paul said this, believe in the Lord, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they took the word of the Lord to him and to all that were in the house. And he took them at the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. You see, we have a job. It's not just get saved and go to heaven. It's get saved and draw and tell others about what Jesus did for you. Our testimony is so crucial to others being saved. That's the reason why we need to do this with urgency. The Lord's are getting ready to come back. The ark has been built. We're getting ready to get in it. And I pray that you're ready for the rapture. We talked about the rapture. Amen. Our verse for the day is Psalm 37, verse 39. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. I don't know if you realize or not, but we're in some troubled times right now. I believe this COVID-19, like I've said uh about about six weeks ago, I, I said that uh, COVID-19 is just the front. There's something bigger and uh, on a grander scale than what we are seeing right now. And what we see on the news, um, it's getting rough. It's getting bad. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that we can get back into church. I believe what this nation needs is uh, the church, the body of Christ, showing their faith in Jesus. Um, you know, we've been we've been open. This will be the fourth week. And um, we were given the opportunity to have 25% in the church. That means we can have 25 in church. And our testimony right now is not what it should be because we've not had 25 yet. Matter of fact, our high Sunday is 15, and that's counting me. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I believe that if we're going to show people that we have faith in the creator of this universe and the protection that we've talked about when we talked about being strong and courageous, we're going to find the house 
of the Lord to be a refuge. We're going to find that secret place of the Lord that we look for his hand to move. And, um, you know, others are watching. Your neighbors are watching. Those that you've ever mentioned Jesus to are watching. And I, I pray that we would get busy about what it is the Lord has placed before us. Our attitude adjustment for today is I will share the way, the truth, and the life that is found in only our Lord Jesus. So be here Sunday. We're going to be talking about uh, the days of Noah. Uh, and here's the thing. The subject of the lesson is there is peace for the obedient. There's peace for the obedient. These times we're in, we can find peace. And it's only because we're saved and Jesus is our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much. One, I'm glad you saved me. I'm glad that you drew me through the Holy Spirit to you as a young boy. And I ran and I, I, I didn't do things right. I had to learn. And Lord, you didn't give up on me. You are thankful. I'm so thankful that you're my heavenly father. We think about Father's Day this weekend. You're my heavenly father. And you never give up on me. You give me second chances and thirds and fourths. And I can't even count the many time, how many times you give me a different a second chance. I pray, Lord, that we would be busy, that I would be busy inviting people to your son, Jesus. Let us be the ambassadors that you have commanded us to be. Doing your work because you called us to do that. And I pray that you would help us with courage and strength. And Lord, that we would keep our eyes on you, not the world or the news. And I pray that you would help our church family. I pray that you continue to help us grow. I pray that we would be uh, drawing others to you. I thank you for this salvation that is so free. Um, and we can't even start to understand what it will mean in the in the future but we know that we'll be saved we know we will be like jesus i look so look forward to that and i thank you for all that you're doing it's in jesus name we pray amen y'all have a blessed weekend again you fathers uh appreciate you and uh pray that you have a glorious uh weekend and hopefully i'll see y'all here sunday y'all take care